Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. We are uh, on a mission. Yes. This is uh, our fourth video in a day that was busy with people. And so um, these are coming out in sequence. So you'll be seeing them as one a day. But yeah, we're just barreling straight ahead as I had too many tabs open and <laughs> I just felt like I got to get all this done. I feel like the we need to get this out soon. It, it is really important because people are, you know, people are believing in things that I think are not fair. You know, it's not fair. It's not fair to take someone's belief system from them and give them something out of, you know, and just say, here, trust us, just follow this, just do that. Don't ask any questions. And if you do, just believe it's a divine mystery when really it's pretty deep and dark. Yeah. And we've talked about this and I'm just going to include this as another little reference. Albert Pike's 1871 plan for three world wars. This was his letter to his friend Mazzini, who actually brought him into the Masonic Lodges back in 1871. Now, of course, official sources will say, this is a hoax, this is a hoax. Yeah, I don't think it's a hoax. And especially because 1871, we're going to do a video just entitled 1871, because it was a year that the controllers really implemented so many different aspects of their plan. Key year. But the Third World War, and, and so yeah, if you look at these wars, this is all about divide and conquer. It's exactly what we see with the Tower of Babel. Come, let us go down there. Humanity is united, working as one. We cannot have this. We must scatter them, divide them into tribes, and then pit them so that they fight each other. They won't even notice that we are doing all this from the shadows. And this is the truth. And and this is exactly you know what we have. And we're right here at the doorstep of the Third World War, which is, is right upon us. And it's basically, again, it's taking advantage of Christianity and uh, Islam. And it's just about mutually assured human destruction. When we look to the stories of giants, okay, it's going all the way to giants. What are we talking about here? Well, there's been tons of giant bodies found in the U.S., for instance, all over the world, all over the world. And you could find news article one after another, what giant body found, seven foot, eight foot, nine foot, ten foot, even more sometimes. Big giant bodies all over the u.s and as i'm looking at the map i'm thinking you know it, it, it's not too far off of our modern uh population density breakdown it really isn't these were beings that were living here and were exterminated there was a genocide here and this genocide that we're talking about is not the other genocide, the genocide that was going on against those that we would call uh, Native Americans, quote unquote Indians. Uh, again, you know, Columbus not knowing what, what side of the world he was on. Sh yeah, sure. No, this was the genocide uh, that happened before that. And so these beings were living maybe where you are today, and they're gone. Uh, virtually gone uh, some of their DNA might be in some of us and there could still be some hidden out there in little pockets there was a genocide that happened here they were wiped out the system wiped them out and you could look to uh, the Bible again David and Goliath of course Goliath is is made to be a bad guy and we could also go and look at some of the biblical terms for giants and Remember when the spies came back uh, to the Israelites and said, oh man, they are huge. We are like grasshoppers to them. And many people will say, well, that gave the excuse to go ahead and wipe out this race of giants because they were obviously uh, children of the fallen angels. And so, you know, they must be wiped out. God wiped them out with a flood or tried to wipe them out with a flood, right? Yeah, to wipe out all the giants. But then when we look to the stories of the Yugas, we're giants. 
when we're in a golden age, or even in the silver, and also even in the bronze. It's only in the Kali Yuga that we're much smaller stature and our lives are very short. And the reason why our lives are really short is because <laughs> of the system that we're in. Yeah, it's the food, it's the water, it's the air, it's the modern MED system. It's all the above. And it's purposeful. It's purposeful. The giants are not what you think they are if you are looking at it from a purely biblical point of view. And in fact, again, history is written by the victors. We should realize this. So what will they say about those living in the NATO countries, for instance, in the future? Are we the giants? Is humanity the giants? And this article oh, it wants me to grab it. China preparing for D-Day invasion of continental U.S. with forces to land on the beaches of California as Biden and Newsom serve as China's accomplices. This is from May 20th, 2022. Leaked audio that appears to have originated from a meeting of China's top war generals reveals elaborate plans for a land invasion in the near future waged by the PLA. Augmented with cyber warfare, orbital space weapons, and activation of CCP civilians currently embedded in corporations and government all around the world. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We are so close to this kicking off. So, so close. Leaked document shows Chinese intent to commit mass American genocide following the occupation of America. If you look back to WW2, and, you know, this is, this is heavy stuff, guys, but what we saw with that final solution, that was a test run. And it's now go time. And this is what we have to realize is planned. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And this is quoting that 2005 speech where a certain general, very high up, said, you know, if, if we have to eliminate you know, two or 300 million Americans, it's better than 800 million Chinese. But we have to recognize this has always been about dividing and conquering us. So China's a pawn, Russia's a pawn, the U.S. is a pawn, the U.K. is a pawn. We're all pawns. And these guys are pawns. The migrants are pawns. As you look at basically uh, two and a half million entering in the last year, it's probably even quite a bit more than that. And, you know, they right here are saying 18,359 communist Chinese nationals just since January. Yeah, it's an overwhelming force that's coming in. And people are noticing it everywhere. A massive amount of people are coming in, not just to the U.S., also into Europe. You know, and we looked and we saw all those getting off the boats in Lampedusa, Double the amount of people that lived on the island just came to this island. Well, where are they going? They're moving north. They're moving into Italy. And they're going to uh, cause absolute havoc. Where are the women and children? Well, when men go to war, they don't take the women and children. There are no women and children there. This is so obvious. The whole of Europe, the whole EU, it, it's all, it's part of a bigger plan. It could not be more obvious. They say there's 500,000 more getting ready to come over into Europe from Northern Africa. This is perhaps the most massive military operation the world has seen in the last several thousand years. Genocide in the Bible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lots of books have been written about this. Did, did, did God really command genocide? Coming to terms with the justice of God. Well, the first thing we have to do is divine, define God. And that's what we did in the last, last two videos, trying to first define God, as this is the one that I want to get across because you know, we, we are in such an imminence of kickoff to events that truly are biblical in perspective. The violence of the biblical God. The Joshua delusion, rethinking genocide in the Bible. It's all right there. Destruction of the Canaanites. And I've even seen people that are friends 
uh, have this mindset that they think, well, what happened to the Canaanites was because they were all the offspring of the fallen angels. Uh, no, <laughs> no, that's what the control structure wants you to think. What happened to the Canaanites is going to happen to the people in the NATO countries unless we could have some sort of miraculous awakening. A huge awakening. You know, looking at the Bible is more of a playbook. It's a cyclical playbook that happens over and over and over. You might want to look at it and think, oh, these are things that just happened so long ago. No, these are things that they continue to do. The controllers, those that wrote the Bible and so many people who uphold this belief system of the controllers, it puts people in a position to allow everything to happen. We don't have to settle for what they want us to settle for. We are sovereign beings, but we have to claim that sovereignty. And without claiming our sovereignty, to me, all I see is a huge circus tent and it, it's just going to get deflated. It's just going to drop. And right now it's being pumped full of energy and it's it's not a good situation that we're in right now to have all these other other entities coming into our country with certain promises and they're probably going to be given um they're going to be given things to do operations to fulfill and when you look back in the bible it says well god said to go kill every man woman and child and you know their cows and pigs and everything else well we're really no different from back then to now it's not a good thing no and again theologians uh, they grapple with how can they put a good spin on this right. how can we possibly put a good spin on this as you you know know there's many different mass killings the flood sodom and gomorrah firstborns of egypt right all those plagues in egypt too let my people go yeah, that's not clear either. When when you look deeper into that, and and who exactly are we talking about, and what were these people? Were they slaves? No, there's there's a lot more than meets the eye there. And and again, that's another topic for another video. Canaanites under Moses and Joshua. We should be looking carefully at that. And the Amalekites annihilated by Saul. If you actually read it, it's it's crazy for the Israelites had wandered in the wilderness 40 years until all the nation's men of war who had come out of Egypt had died since they did not obey again. When you look at the word, the Lord, the, the Lord or God, as we were saying in previous uh, videos, there's many different words that are used. Sometimes it's El, sometimes it's Yah or Yahweh. Sometimes it's Elohim, again, mighty ones, those that come from above, judges of a sort, divine judges. And, and that we were attempting to give some clarity in the last two videos. Because again, these stories really, they're, they're not monotheistic. Monotheism is a cover story for really, and it's not even polytheism, it's, it's truly, it's covering up who the controllers really, really are. So he had sworn to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. So in order to do it, you're going to have to kill everybody that's already living in there and has been living in there for countless generations. And it's fascinating, too, because I've seen uh, DNA articles on DNA of the ancient Canaanites. And, you know, they're not. It doesn't show that necessarily they have any uh, even unusual giant DNA or anything that's quote unquote, maybe, you know, more Neanderthal or, or Denisovan or something mysterious. No, they appear to be the same people that were there even, even today. Well, you know, the ones we would call Palestinians, it, it, they were just basically pushed off their land. Well, more than pushed off. When you look at it, this is First Chronicles 27. This is the list of Israelite generals and captains and their officers. Who's wandering in that desert for 40 years with a massive army? As you see, 24,000 troops under this one, 24,000 troops under that one, another 24, another 24. This is a massive army. 
in fact, all those counted totaled 603,550. This is an enormous army. This is really what is massing in North Africa right now and is going to invade and is in the process of invading Europe. So, you know, Europe, you are Canaan. The U.S., you are Canaan. And the Israelites or the BRICS nations or however you want to, you know, look at it, we're just changing the labels. But we're the ones that are going to suffer like the Canaanites did. So all the Israelites 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army were. And, and again, nothing has changed. This is dark age. And when you look at that, they're wandering around with an army of 600 plus thousand. The Israeli population today is 9 million. That's a big army in proportion to even today's standards. And when we talk about the famous story of Jericho and they blasted their horn, what was that? Because a lot of people have, have ventured that this was actually some sort of technology, a sonic technology that when the horn blasted, it wasn't really a horn, the wall collapsed. It wasn't really a horn. And again, when you look to um, blowing the ram's horn in, in that tradition, uh, the shofar, again, what is this really? Is it some sort of technology? Because the walls came caving down and then they slaughtered everyone, men, women, children, babies, ox, sheep, donkeys. But go into uh, their storehouses, take the silver and the gold and put it in the you know, storehouse of the house of the Lord. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. You know, when it comes to sound and vibration, that can be used as weaponry. When I was studying and learning about sound healing, there were many books who, that had been taken and put away due to uh, national security. There was concerns of national security that if people found out this information, they could possibly use it against another person or someone. So our military they know about sound. They have a deep understanding of what sound and vibration can do. But where do we think they got that information? It's definitely otherworldly. And this is talking about Saul. So go and attack the Amalekites. Devote to destruction all that belongs to them. Do not spare them, but put to death the men, the women, the children, and the infants. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> that's not nice, you know, I mean, that's really not nice. And when we're given a, a Bible and we're sent to church every weekend, every Sunday, and we're supposed to do as they say and just really not ask too many questions. And, you know, if you don't get the answer to the question, just submit. Uh, it's a divine mystery. No, these are beings that helped other human beings write this Bible that are not from this planet. And until we have a keen understanding of our belief system, that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. See, we crave, we crave spirituality. So what's the best thing to do if they know we're going to go after spirituality and that's going to be our, our guiding, our guiding light? Well, give us our religion and let that guide us. And therefore they have control. They have the reins. Yeah, and this is what happened to the Midianites, and this is Moses leading the people, and so they fought against the Midianites uh, as the Lord, or the Mighty Ones, commanded Moses, and they killed every man. Among the victims, it gets into a list, <clears throat> and then they captured the Midianite women and children. They took all their herds, flocks, and goods as plunder. They burned all the towns where the Midianites had settled, as well as their cap, uh, camps. And so they ask Moses, uh, what do we do with the women? Are you going to let them live or what? And, uh, and, and the kids. Now kill all the boys <clears throat> and kill every woman who has slept with a man, but save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. Yeah, this is Moses. Why do people put Moses in a good light? This is a dark, dark en energy. And it, it's amazing. Again, Columbus. The, we celebrate Columbus. He was the same type of person as Moses. 
and we're, we're taught to celebrate these beings from such a young young age and here it is you know here it is exactly what they are what they have done why are we putting people like that on a pedestal when we, we're taught completely different you know you might as well put somebody like gil bates or you guys know some other politicians that are not very nice put them on pedestals you know or is that what's going to be written in the books are they going to be written in as heroes <laughs> yes that's exactly right you know think about the people that are going to be in the cell cities they're going to be all talking about the greatness of gil bates the greatness of uh you know klaus etc etc soros you, you keep naming naming it and you know they're all part of it and so you can see these 10 bible verses about genocide deuteronomy 2017 you shall utterly destroy them the hittite and the amorite the canaanite and the perizzite the hivite and the jebusite the lord your god has commanded you and again, many times these words, when it says the Lord your God, it's either really translating as Yahweh in, in these particular instances or Elohim as mighty ones, the, the mighty ones that came from above. Uh, you know, again, the ruling or the sons of the gods. It, there's different interpretations that have been used for that. But again, they just put the Lord your God. But that's not really what, what we're hearing here. All the girls who have not known man intimately keep for yourselves. This is slavery of the worst kind. Can't we see the analogy here, what's going on in the world today? It's so clear. Go and strike uh, Amalek and utterly destroy all he has. Do not spare him and put to death both man and woman, child and infant, etc., etc. Samaria will be held guilty for she has rebelled against Klaus Schwab. No, I mean her God, yes. They will fall by the sword, so the little ones will be dashed in pieces and their pregnant women will be ripped open. This is the Bible? Yes, this is the Bible. People don't know what's in the Bible. It's, it's basically the history of the system. This is the control system. Now, you'll get blessings and you will rule over many nations ah this is what they entice people with absolutely destroy everything in the city both man and woman young and old edge of the sword this is this is the system and it really is a genocide it's all about dividing people and it's all about you know labeling people discrimination dehuman dehumanization and then you know, the governments will have special groups to fight certain things, polarization, preparation, persecution, then finally extermination. And then plausible deniability. We didn't know what we were doing. We looked to Thanksgiving. Special time to remember all the things we have and forget about the genocide that was committed to get it. And some people can't face this fact. This is the reality. And it's coming to roost. It's a death doctrine. Certainly, the Bible is certainly not pro-life when you look at it from this point of view. And it's going to happen now to those that profess a belief in uh, the fundamentalist point of view of Christianity and those that profess a belief in other systems and those that profess no beliefs indiscriminately in certain places, as was the case in Canaan. There's a, a lot of darkness there. And, and we do talk about people finding their sovereignty and i i just don't see people finding their sovereignty through the bible you know although it can be a path to sovereignty once you read it and once you understand it and once you realize the information is a lot of just re-chewed up cabbage then you can move about and find find your spiritual presence within yourself and again, you know, will we be branded as fallen angels yeah. by the history books? Well, they were they were just fallen angels, so they got what was coming to them. Again, history repeats itself, especially if we do not wake up. So please share and wake up as many as possible for absolutely time is short. Thank you guys for being part of this family and understanding how important this is for people to understand. It's all about divide and conquer. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.